Hi everyone, welcome to our 9th module of Verilog HDL Crash Course. In this module, we are going to cover Verilog procedural blocks. So before I start this video, friends, just a small request. If you are new to this channel or if you have not subscribed this channel so far, please do subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Now let's get started. So the first procedural block in Verilog is nothing but an always block. So an always block in a module executes simultaneously unlike conventional programming language in which all statements execute sequentially. So what does that mean is if we have a .v Verilog file and we have more than one always blocks present in this particular Verilog design. So, teach all always blocks will execute concurrently or basically there won't be any dependency of one always block to other always block. Whenever there is a change happens in the sensitivity list of these always blocks, these always, always blocks are going to be executed irrespective of any dependency. And the always blocks can be used to imply latches, flip-flops or combinational logic. So to infer latches, flip-flops or combinational logic, we can use the always procedural block. So the inference of latches, flip-flops or combinational logic in RTL using always procedural block depends on the coding style in which we are basically coding our RTL always procedural block. And all the statements enclosed within begin and end executes sequentially. So we have one always block and in that always block we have a begin and end keywords and inside that there are multiple statements. So all these statements basically executes sequentially. And the always block can be triggered to execute by the level positive age negative edge of one or more signals present in the sensitivity list of always block. So basically a always block can be triggered by any changes in the signals which are present in the sensitivity list of always block. So what is the sensitivity list? Sensitivity list is nothing but whatever we mention here after at the rate keyword. So these signals event 1, event 2, these event 1 and event 2 is nothing but a change in one of the signal. So that change can be a level sensitive change or an age sensitive change. We will cover this in more details in incoming slides. And the next point is procedures can be named. So the advantage of named procedure is in simulations we can disable named blocks. But for synthesis it is just manually used as a comment or basically there is no extra benefit of using named block in, uh, in the RTL which we are going to synthesize. But during simulation basically we can enable or disable the blocks if they are named block. So here is the syntax 1 we have a always at the rate then these are the event 1 or event 2 or there can be multiple events so these all events are separated by the keyword or. So if any of the event occurs in the sensitivity list this always block is going to be executed. So all the statements present between begin and end keyword will get executed. The second type of syntax for always block is we have the always at the rate and then we have the multiple events here then begin and end keywords and here we can have the name of that procedural block. So by using the name of this procedural block, if we are using the always block in our test bench, we can enable and disable that particular block by using the name of this block and the keyword disable, which we have covered in one of our previous video. Now let's see some examples. So here if you see, we have always at the rate A or B. So if there is no positive age or negative age is mentioned along with the variable name, that means those variables are level sensitive. So if any changes happens on those variables like if the variable changes from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, this always block is basically going to execute. The second example is always at positive age clock. 
that means whenever there is a positive edge happening on the clock signal this always block is going to execute so this is nothing but as triggered block and this is level triggered block now to implement the sequential circuits or flip flops or resistors we have to use the edge sensitive triggered always blocks and to implement the combinational logic we have to use level sensitive signals in the sensitivity list of our voltage block so i hope this is clear now the next procedural block in very log is initial block so initial block is a non synthesizable block that means we cannot use initial block in our rtl design but definitely we can use initial block in our test bench and the initial block is similar to the always block but it only executes once at the beginning of the simulation so if you see the always block will trigger whenever there is a change happens in any of the variable present in the sensitivity list but initial block will execute only once at the beginning of the simulation and it is typically used to initialize variables and specify signal waveforms during simulation so initial block is basically used in test bench for initializing variables initial blocks are not supported for synthesis so so the syntax of initial block is very much similar to the always block where we have the initial keyword but here we do not have anything at the rate and the sensitivity list because the initial block only executes once so we definitely do not need any kind of sensitivity list for the initial block and then we have the begin and end keywords and the statements which needs to be executed inside this let's see one example here so initial block like always blocks initial blocks also executes concurrently or there is no dependency of one initial block to another initial block so if you see here we have this one first initial block and inside this we are basically initializing a clear signal and a clock signal so this is initialized at the beginning of the simulation now next we have one another initial block in that we have a variable and basically at time t equal to 0 we are initializing this variable a to 2 tick b 0 0 now after 15 time unit this is an inter assignment delay so after 50 unit a will get basically 1 so at time 0 the value of a was 0 0 at time 50 the value of a is 0 1 and then after next 50 units that means after 100 time units we are assigning the value 1 0 to the variable a so at time 100 the value of variable a will become 1 0 so this is how we can make use of initial block in our test bench if we want to basically drive some signals we can use the initial block and we can basically assign the value something like this so i hope the two types of procedural blocks used in verilog hdl which are always block and initial block are clear to you if you have any doubts please write down in the comment section also if you like this video please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel so that you will get notified as soon as i upload a new video thank you very much